Now, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise right now, would you? Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise and worship. Give Him a hand of praise and worship. Come on, one of these days, one of these days a trumpet's going to sound. One of these days we're going to be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And one of these days what we've been singing about down here is going to become a reality. We're not going to sing about a view. We're going to have that view. We're not going to sing about walking. We're going to be walking. So go ahead and worship Him tonight. Go ahead and just praise Him. My, 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 my. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. If I could tonight, I would like to go immediately into the Word of God and maybe tomorrow... Uh, I can give some honor to where honor is due, but right now the waters are troubled. And the, the atmosphere is right for something to happen tonight. While you're turning to Joshua chapter 9 and verse number 3, let me tell you about heaven. Joshua chapter 9 and verse number 3, but let me tell you about heaven. It's not what's in heaven that makes it heaven. It's what's not in heaven. Because the writer talked about some no more. And you, you, you see, I have Jesus right now. But I've also got trouble right now. I, I've got Jesus right now. But I've also got sorrow right now. I've got Jesus right now, but I got things right now. And am I alone tonight? I've got Jesus right now, but I got things in my life that cause tears to flow down my face. But what makes heaven heaven is not what is there, but what's not there. Because the writer said, and there'll be no more pain. And there'll be no more suffering. And God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. And there'll be no more death. Well, it's happened. I'm rejoicing tonight, not because of what's there, but because of what will not be there. Joshua chapter 9, verse number 3. And I'll give out honor tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. But right now, let's go right into the Word. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work wildly, or that means deceitfully, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their asses, and old wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and clotted upon their feet, old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua under the camp at, Gilg at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now therefore make a league with us. Go all the way down to verse 22. Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you when you dwell among us. Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be free, Freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood, and drawers of water, for the house of my God. And they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants, how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you, and have done this thing. And now, behold, we are in thy hand, as it seemeth good and right unto thee to do unto us do. And so did he unto them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they slew them not. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord unto this day in the place which he should choose. I want to preach on this subject tonight. Putting your mistakes to work. Putting 
your mistakes to work. If you put your Bibles down, if you lift up your hands tonight, the Word of God is true. The messenger will do everything he can to deliver God's Word. But there must be a receiver in the crowd. Your ears and heart must be willing to receive the Word tonight. Father, anoint your servant this evening. Lord, everything that I say and do, Lord, may it be for your glory and for your honor. There's someone here tonight that is defeated, that needs victory. There's someone here tonight without the Holy Ghost baptism. Lord, baptize him tonight before the service is over. Lord, there's those here tonight that are wallowing in their defeat, God. They're wallowing, Lord, in the misery of past sins. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me tonight. We'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord. Now I'd like Brother Maupin to preface my message tonight before I begin with a statement. I am not advocating tonight. I am not preaching a message tonight that gives you the license and the permission To go out and sin. I am not not preaching this tonight. So that you can leave here and say. Well the preacher said that our mistakes. Could go to work for us. Because what a lot of people are calling grace today. Is nothing more than disgrace. And I'm I'm not preaching about a person that has no mind or heart. Or makes no attempt to be freed from their sins. I am not preaching, friend, to that individual tonight. But the truth of the matter is that our new birth is much like a natural birth. A child does not come into this world speaking plainly. A child does not come into this world running a marathon. Children come into this world and they learn how to talk through gibberish and they learn how to talk. And they learn words at a time and then they put words together and form sentences and they go about their maturity. They begin to roll over. They begin to crawl. They begin to stand up. They begin to walk. And that not without falling and bruising and bumping. But all the while, you know, this is just the process to getting this person, this baby, to maturity. There is tonight in this building people that have recently went through the new birth and you're finding yourself falling. You're finding yourself falling. You're finding yourself fighting some habits and fighting some temptations. And yes, from time to time, you have found yourself falling. You didn't want to. You fought against it. But somehow deception entered your mind. So tonight I preface this sermon by saying I am not advocating that we sin because we have grace. I'm preaching the very opposite. We will will walk away from sin because we have grace. Joshua and the people of God were coming through the land. They were taking every city. Nothing could stand. Nothing and no one could stand in the way of the people of God. They were led by a pillar of cloud by day. They were led by a pillar of fire by night. Underneath the ground, just underneath the surface, just taking a stick and jobbing it in the ground and singing, spring up, oh well, spring up. God followed them all through their journeys and they had water. There was manna that fell for them. They had bread that was rained down from heaven. They came to a Red Sea, but the Red Sea couldn't stand in their way because Moses and the rod, you know where I'm preaching tonight, they go across on dry land. city of Jericho couldn't stand. You could, they say you could drive chariots, four chariots side by side along the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho were no match for God our creator because when the people of God obeyed the Lord and marched and gave a shout at the appointed time the Bible said the walls of Jericho fell. There was no people that could stand before the people of God. 
There was no bodies of water. There was no limitations. No limitations to the people of God. And the Gibeonites heard that the Israelites were just three days journey from them. And the Gibeonites had a mighty city there. And the Gibeonites got together and they held a council. And the Gibeonites said, you know we'll never defeat those Israelites. We will never defeat the people of God. The only way we can ever defeat them is to deceive them. It's the only way that we can defeat them, the Gibeonites said, would be to deceive them. We cannot match them. We cannot match up against their God that can bring walls down. We cannot match up against their God that can split Red Seas and Jordan Rivers. We are no match. Our gods have never done what their God is doing. And the only way we'll ever defeat the Israelites is to deceive them. I seem to hear that being played over today in our generation. Because greater is he that is within me. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. So the enemy knows tonight when he holds a council meeting about you and how to trip you up. He doesn't talk about power He doesn't talk about meeting you one-on-one and fighting against you. Not because of you, but because of the name of the one you were baptized in. He knows he's no match for you, not because of you, but because of the spirit that resides within you. He knows I am no match for her. I am no match for him. And the only way that I'll ever the only way I'll ever defeat the church, the only way I'll ever defeat you, hell says, I must somehow deceive you. I must some as a matter of fact, you realize that deception was the roadway for the very first sin that entered into humanity. Adam, the Bible says, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve. That was deceived. It was Eve that really thought that if I eat the forbidden fruit that my eyes will be opened and we'll be like God, meaning that Satan planted because there's a a book out right now. It's not a religious book. It's actually a book written by an attorney that talks about how to win an argument. How to win an argument. Because in a courtroom, truth is irrelevant. Who wins in a courtroom is one who can argue the best. You can have a lie and argue a lie. And you can have the truth and not be able to argue with the truth. And so when Satan planted that one simple thought that there was more than what Eve had, it was the thought of deception. So back to our Gibeonites. We can't defeat them. We can't overcome them. Jordan rivers, Red Seas, Jericho's walls. What will we do? We have to deceive them. We have to get them to swear to us they will not destroy us. Well, how are we going to do that? When they see us coming, they'll know we're Gibeonites. How are we going to do that? I'll tell you how we'll do it. We'll put some old clothes on. And we'll put some old shoes on our feet. And we'll, put some, we'll take some bread and somehow, you know, they can make clothes. I grew up in the generation that if you had a pair of blue jeans that looked wore out, they were old. We're living in a generation that if you, that somebody wearing a pair of blue jeans that looked wore out, they might have just bought them two days ago because they come that way. I told somebody that day, I think I, knew how, I think I know how they make some in blue jeans. They hang them up on a clothesline. Take a shotgun, blow a hole, plumb through them, just right through them. And send them off. And they developed them some old looking clothes, some old clothes and some old shoes that looked all ratty and tattered. They somehow took some old bread and made it look old and moldy. They took some bottles of wine and made it look old and they rubbed dust on their face and dirt on them and caused themselves to look like they had been traveling from a far journey. And here they come. Here they come to the people of God. They know we can't defeat them. But if we can just deceive them, 
And so they walked into the camp. And the first thing that Joshua said, where have y'all come from? And they said, we be come from a far country. Way, I mean, we live way off. And can't you see how old we look? And they said, you see this loaf of old looking bread? Said the day that we left our houses, it was fresh, piping hot. Oh, he said, you see these bottles of wine that look like raisin skins? It looked like they're all shriveled up. You see, you see these bottles of wine? They were brand new bottles the day that we left our land. And see these old shoes on our feet? They were brand new. Just got them out of the box the day that we left our land. And said, we have heard about the name of your God. And we want you to make a league with us. We want to join up with you. And brothers and sisters tonight, they made the horrible, horrible mistake. For the Bible says, and they asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. In other words, they allowed what they would see to dictate their decisions and to dictate their direction. They allowed what they could see with their eyes that would make in their minds and say that this is the truth. But the Bible tells you and I tonight, saints, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. And the Bible said they, they, they asked not counsel of the Lord. All the princes raised their right hand. All the rulers raised their right hands and they said, We swear unto thee by Jehovah God that you shall dwell among us and you shall be as us. And we, we, we swear to you by Jehovah God that we will do you no harm. We swear to you by Jehovah God. And about three days later, isn't that amazing about sin? Sin takes about three days to get your eyes open. Isn't it amazing that it was on the third day of creation that the earth burst forth with vegetation? The earth had a resurrection on the third day. We have a resurrection on the third day, Jesus Christ. But sin also has a resurrection on the third day. Too many people are deceived to believe that they can sin. And day one comes to a close and evidently it wasn't all that bad because I didn't fall over dead or nothing bad's happened to me. Day two comes along, it must not be all that bad because after all, I've done this and it's been two days now. But I want you to know that when we choose to walk by our sight and not by the mouth of the Lord, that there will be a resurrection of sin that will meet you about three days later down the road. Well, about three days. About three days later, they come up on that large city of the Gibeonites. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, somebody said, wait a minute, don't get to marching around that city. Wait a minute, priest, don't get your trumpets out. Don't get the Ark of the Covenant and start walking around that city because that's where we live. That's where you live? Yes, that's where we live. Well, you, 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 you lied to us. You, 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 you deceived us. You, you, you told us that, that, that you'd come from a far country and I can see them probably like us today. You know, well, what, it means what is, is. You know, I, I, you know it's what is. Uh, to, to, uh, I know you were thinking a far away off was miles and miles and miles, but we were thinking that a far away off was just three days journey, you know. And we really, yeah, no, 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 you deceived us. You put old shoes on your feet. You put old, old, old loaves of bread. and you, 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 you made us think you had been traveling for months. and you, you deceived us. And here they begin to take out their swords. And they realize we had an enemy among us. And they begin to take out their swords. And somebody said, stop. Joshua said, stop, stop, stop. stop. No, 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 no. We, we can't kill these people. We, we swore to God. We took an oath to them. We, we can't harm this. This is our mistake. Get your mind off of them. They were simply the temptation. The responsibility lies upon us. We were the ones that made the mistake. We were the ones that didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. We, the, we were the ones that looked and, and what we could see, we made a decision. It's us. We've made the mistake. Come on, Joshua. Come on, princess. What are we going to do with our mistake? We have made a mistake. We have sinned. 
What are we going to do? And I said it last night. You cannot unring a rung bell. What are we going to do? We've made a mistake. We cannot unswear. We cannot take the oath back. We have told these people. We have given them our word. We cannot go back. What are we going to do? We have made a mistake. Joshua. Oh, I'm telling you, this is brilliant what he did. Joshua stepped up, and I believe he had the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with these people. We're going to put them to work. Number one, we're going to put them under a curse. And we're going to tell them they'll never be free again in our lives. Yes, they will live among us, but they will not live free among us. Brothers and sisters, tonight there's things that happen in your life and my life that I can't go back and unring a rung bell. I can't go back and undo the oath. But I can look at situations and say, I'll tell you what, you're not going to run free anymore in my life. You are bound. So when I begin to sing about what a view, what a view, what a view, when I get there and you want to creep up in my mind and say, you're never going to get to heaven. You're never going to make it there. You made a mistake. I have bound my sins and I have said you're not free anymore to walk around in my life. Come on, hallelujah. He said not only that, he said, you're cursed. You are cursed. But not only that, you have influence. You've been brought up to believe in multiple gods and heathen gods and false teachings. You are rebellious and evil to the very core. You need to stay in a safe place. And I can think of no safer place than to have you daily visiting the altar. I can, listen, you want to be changed. Get you a daily visitation to the I'm talking. I'm talking about putting your mistake to work for you. Not letting your sin cause you to have condemnation. Not letting your sin drive you away from the church. Precious God tonight, it's because of my mistake that should make me want to go to church. It's because of my mistake, mistake that should make me want to go to the prayer room. Why are you heading to the prayer room? Because I'm full of flesh. Why do you why are you heading to the prayer room? Because I've made some mistakes. Why do you praise the Lord like you praise the Lord? Because I've made some mistakes. Shout out loud, oh what, oh, what a day. Shout it again, oh, what a day. Oh, what a day. Somebody shout, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Someone say it again, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away, I'm talking about a happy day tonight. I'm about to feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Somebody shouted, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. I'm going to tell you right now, you're cursed. You got a curse on you. And people with a curse need to go to where the curse can be reversed. And that's the altar. The altar can reverse the curse. The altar can take you on the verge of suicide. And the altar can turn you around. The altar can put your marriage on the verge of divorce. And the altar can turn you around. The, the altar. You, you're, you're cursed to be no free. You're not free anymore. You'll make a daily trip to the altar. You'll carry wood to the altar daily. And every time that we see you, we'll be reminded of our mistake. But we'll be reminded that our mistake is working for us. Every time you carry that heavy wood on your back, you're going to be thankful that your head wasn't severed from your body. Every time you and your son carries that heavy load of wood up to the altar, 
You're not going to start belly aching about church attendance. You're not still going to start belly aching about what it costs to be an apostolic. You're not going to start belly aching about what it costs to be an Israelite. Every time you and your boy and your daughter and your wife put a heavy log on your shoulder, one of you going to look over to the other and say, Thank God that we're alive. Thank God that we're alive. Can I tell you something tonight, Arkansas? There's some burdens that come with the walk of God. There's some burdens that come with the work of God. But I'm not going to complain and I'm not going to bellyache because they are my salvation. Oh, happy day. Now, somebody shout, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. You, 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 you see, a lot of people can never get to that happy day because they never put their mistakes to work for them. But in chapter 9 of Joshua, they deceived, they were cursed, and they went to work. Drawing water for the labor. Piling wood up around the altar. But you see, you have never put the wood on your shoulder. And you've never carried one bucket of the water of salvation. That what God didn't have a better day coming for you. And in the 10th chapter of the book of Joshua. Oh, give you nights. Where we're saying, thank God we're free. And although we're having to carry water and carry wood, thank God we're free. But there were five demonic kings that got together and said, Did you hear what them Gibeonites have done? Them low down dirty Gibeonites have done joined themselves up to the Israelites. They've done went and joined. They've, been, they've done been proselyted. They've done, they've done turned from their false gods to the true God. And them low down dirty Gibeonites have done joined themselves to the people of God. And them five demonic kings said, we'll make a confederation and we'll go down there to Gibeon and we'll wipe that city off the face of this earth. And them five kings came down. And that's exactly what happens when the enemy understands that you have already made a league with God. That enemy doesn't leave you permanently. He just goes and gets him some more recruits and he plans to attack you again. I would not be telling you the truth to tell you that you get the Holy Ghost and you'll never be tempted again. I would not be telling you the truth to tell you that an evangelist will come by one day and pray for you and you'll never have another temptation, another trial. Because after every victory, the enemy may leave you, but be you well assured that he's just gone off somewhere to regroup and he will come back again. He will come back again. And so, man, the Gibeonites got up one morning and uh, they looked out and here come these five demonic kings. But this time the Gibeonites did not try to fight them. The Gibeonites did not say we will fight them. You see tonight I would like to leave this with you. That when the enemy rings your doorbell, don't you answer the door. When the enemy comes, put the word on him. When the enemy comes and starts messing with your mind, get you a Bible and a pastor and tell that pastor, give me some scripture because I've got a temptation that is knocking at my door and I don't need to go to the door because the devil will wipe the front porch up with me. I'm no match for the devil. But if somehow I can get some word down in me, if I can get some word down in me at the Arkansas camp meeting, if I can get some word down in me at the Wednesday night Bible study, if I can get some word down in me, the next time that devil comes knocking at my door, the word of God's gonna open up the door and say, yes, what did you want? Somebody, somebody help me preach tonight. He looked out one day and there was those five demonic kings. And the Gibeonites said, send a messenger boy and go get me Joshua. You know, Joshua is the Old Testament name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Joshua of the New Testament. 
You see, people that have been deceiving understand now that they have been cursed. But they understand now that their lives are free. But they also understand now that when they get in any trouble, somebody needs to go find Joshua. Somebody needs to go find Jesus. Somebody needs to praise him until it rings in your soul. Somebody needs to begin to talk about him until he becomes a reality to you. When that Gibeonite got up and he said, we've got five demonic kings that have got us the city of Gibeon surrounded. He said, call out for Joshua. Somebody go get Joshua. And they went off and got the message down to Joshua. And Joshua came all night marching back to Gibeon. And when Joshua got to Gibeon, Joshua got the swords out. And Joshua began to fight. But somehow, oh happy day. Somehow, oh happy day. God looked down from heaven. Because all I'm responsible for is the fight. God is responsible for the victory. You hear me tonight? Some of you think that you're responsible for the victory. You're not responsible for the victory. You're only responsible for the fight. All right? You leave the victory up to God. He's the one that can give you the victory. But you've got to learn how to fight, 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 fight. I read, I read an article about a tribe of men that are the world's most famous rain dancers. They're the world's most famous tribe that when there's a drought, you call for this tribe and they can dance and it will rain. And one of them was interviewed. Just what makes you? the most successful rain dancers in the world. He said, ma'am, it's easy. Easy? It's easy. We just dance till it rains. Some of you are trying to orchestrate the victory. Stay out of God's drawing room. Stay out of God's war room. The victory's not yours to determine when, where, and how. God just says you keep slinging the sword. You keep raising your hands. You keep going to the house of God. You keep getting down on your knees. You keep worshiping God. Because all you've got to do is fight. True story. True story. True story. Charleston Heston, a young actor, in the movie, Ben Hur. Charleston Heston was a very young actor at the time, and he was given the script. The script of the movie had him in a chariot race, and it had him winning in a chariot race. But Charleston Heston's a little uneducated, and he's a little bit naive to how the movies work. And he's nervous. And he goes to the director and he says, Hey, before this race starts, he said, I got to tell you, I don't know how to drive this thing. And I, I, I gotta, you got to teach me a little bit of how to drive the chariot in the first place. But I'm not sure that I can win this race. <laughs> and the director said, Charleston, you just get up there and you drive and you leave the winning to me. Do we not hear Jesus say, I am the author and the finisher of your faith? Can I tell you, I don't know what chapter you're in, ma'am. Second row, the first lady here on the end, I don't know what chapter you're in in your life, but the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you that the chapter you're in is not the last chapter of your life because God is going to step into your life and God is going to begin to write some more. God is going to be, oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I don't know if I can contain myself. I'm glad he's the author and he's the finisher. You can suck your thumb if you want to. You can look like you've been baptized in pickle juice and born on the dark side of the moon. You can walk around with the mully grubs all you want to. But he is the author and he is the finisher of my faith. I wish somebody, I wish somebody 
he would just shout, oh, happy day. Brother Moppin, aren't you thankful that God had another chapter for your wife? Aren't you glad that God had another chapter for you? I'm so glad God had another chapter for me. I'm so glad when I was a 16-year-old pothead, marijuana head, 60, yeah, yeah, your general superintendent, If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with grace. Because if a writer of over half the New Testament could be a Christian killer, I think the general superintendent of the assemblies could be a former potty. cap off and I know what it's like to stick my nose down and sniff gasoline until I pass out I know what it's like to take spray paint fill a bag full of fumes and pull it down over your head I know what it's like to smoke marijuana laced with other things and wake up day a day later in the woods I know what it's like for all of that but I'm so glad that when God looked down at a 16-year-old boy, he didn't see a pothead and a drug addict. He didn't see a penitentiary-bound boy. He saw a pulpit-bound boy. Oh, happy day. I'm telling you, folks, the Holy Ghost is about to hit this building. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is about to hit this building. We are setting up on, a, on the top of a powder keg of Holy Ghost revival. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Joshua said, you, you, you all deceived us. You all deceived us. But you sure have been carrying some mighty fine wood to the altar. You all deceived us, but I sure have enjoyed opening my tent door up every morning and having me a fresh bucket of water there. You sure have deceived us, but man, all that wood burning on that altar. The, the sourness of deception done gone from my lips now. Every time I see you Gibeonites now, I think about indoor plumbing. Every time I think about you Gibeonites now, I think about, I think about what wood being laid out there for me to burn. I don't have the sourness in my lips anymore of deception. I, I kind of take a liking to you Gibeonites. And old Joshua made it up to Gibeon and he began to fight. He began to sling the sword. I'm not making this up, folks. In your own time, don't do it now, but in your own time, read the 10th chapter. God said, I like it. And God said, I think I'll start throwing some rocks from heaven. 
And the Bible said that God started throwing hailstones. It said, and the Lord rained down hailstones out of heaven. The Lord said, I kind of like this. I kind of I kind of like people working with people that have made mistakes. I kind of like the righteous working with the unrighteous. You getting that? I, I kind of like the righteous working with the unrighteous. It's not the righteous being holier than thou and driving away the unrighteous. It's the righteous working with the unrighteous and they cause the unrighteous to become righteous and, and now the righteous is fighting for the former unrighteous and God said, I kind of just like that and God started peppering the rocks to them. God started throwing the rocks to them. And the Bible says, folks, I don't know how much more of this I can take. I'm about to run around this building. The Bible said, and there was more there that day that lost their lives because of the hailstones than they did with the sword. Go ahead and stand. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Go ahead and stand. Just hold. Just hold it, man. Just hold it. I, I, I believe God, God's word, God's word, God's word, God's word is going to roll your socks up and down like a window shade right now. You hear me? God, God's word. I said God's word is about to do something. Somebody shout, oh, happy day. Come on, shout, oh, happy day. You know who's shouting, oh, happy day? Those that were deceiving. Those that were deceived. Those that were deceiving. You know who shout no happy day? The Gibeonites. The Gibeonites. Bro, this day is this day's not over yet. Because Joshua, he looks up and God's peppering rocks down from heaven. And Joshua looks around and says, I still got some more I need to take care of. And Joshua said, if I could just have some more daylight. If I could just have some more daylight. I don't know what got in Joshua's mind. I don't know if Joshua saw God working with the hailstones and God, Joshua said, well, if God can rain hailstones down, he said, son, stand right where you're at. Moon, don't you go anywhere. Son, you wait right there. And the Bible said God heard it. And the Bible said God hearkened to a man. And the God that created the sun said I know it's supposed to be going in all different directions. But God said I'm going to listen to oh happy. If I had the time but I don't. I could take you. To 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 3 and show you the tabernacle was pitched in Gibeah. If I had the time to take you, I could take you to Nehemiah as he's trying to build the wall and a man is named and the Bible said he is a Gibeonite. If I had the time, I could take you to one of David's mighty men and it gives his name and it says that he was a Gibeonite. But you see, you would have never had a David's mighty man and Nehemiah would not have had a helper and the Ark of the Covenant would not have had a city called Gibeon and there would have been no need for a battle that stopped the sun and there would have been no need hadn't somebody got a hold of a mistake and said instead of going 20 years drowning in this instead of going 20 years letting it defeat me let me put this mistake to work Our Bible teaches us, good people of the state of Arkansas, our Bible teaches us. For we know, not we feel. You won't find anywhere Paul said we feel. You'll find Paul saying we know. The Bible said for we know. All things. All things. For we know all things work together for the good to them that love God 
and who are called according to his purpose. He didn't say all righteous things. He didn't say all perfect things. He said all things. God can take a 16-year-old pothead. God can take a 16-year-old marijuana smoking drunken boy. And God can say, I can take his life and I can cause it to work together for the good to them that love God and who are called according. I wonder tonight, now I've brought you as far as I can bring you. I can't bring you no more. It's in your court now. And it's your move now. But I wonder how many people at this camp meeting tonight would like to walk out of their pew and to bring a mistake up here to the altar and say, go to work for me. 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 Come on, get up here as close as you can up around the altar. Get up as close as you can. Come on. Come on. The Holy Ghost is in this house. We are sitting on a keg of spiritual TNT. God is about to move tonight. God is about to move. Come on, praise Him. I said to praise Him tonight. I said to praise Him right now. Come on. Come on. Worship Him. Praise Him. Magnify it. Glorify it. Yeah, that I'm going to show you. Woo! Come on. If you had to use your hands to sin, use your hands to praise right now. If you had to use your voice to sin, use your voice to praise right now. your hands to sin. Use your hands to praise him right now. Come on, if you use your voice to sin, use your voice to praise him right now. If you use your mind to sin, use your mind to praise him right now. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Wait a minute. Some of, our, some of us are letting our music drown out the fact we're not saying anything. I said to can't nobody. Come on, Pentecostals tonight. Come on, Pentecostals tonight. You didn't get in sin by keeping your hands down. You got in sin by being active. I said they can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like my God. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my Then he told me to run on. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Then he told me to 
run on. Well, he, he filled, filled me with the, the Holy Ghost. Then he told me to run on. Well, because he is my friend. Can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Well, now, can't, can't nobody do me like, do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Because he is my friend. Well, I said, now, can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody 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 do me like Jesus. Oh nobody, 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 nobody. Jesus, oh, can't nobody oh, do, do me, me like, like the Lord. Lord. Oh, can't nobody do, do me like, like Jesus, cause he's my friend. I'm singing nobody, 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 do me like nobody, 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 You, not you, not you, and not all of you, and most of you, but none of you, Come not on. you, not you, Come on. not you, oh, can do me like the Lord. I said, There can't nobody. 